Hey, everybody. Hi, guys. Well, from gorgeous Salt Lake City, Utah. It's Thank God I'm Atheist. The podcast. I'm Frank. And I'm Diggity Dan. And this is the Morning Zoo. Yeah, I guess so. (laughs) Coming up today, uh, we're going to be, well, it was just Mormon General Conference. Oh, yeah. This last weekend. And there's a couple things that happened that we want to talk about. Stuff relevant to you guys. Yeah. Even, even you non-Mormons oh, out there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't, you don't have to. This is, this is side. This is, this is this on is, the side of Mormonism. This yeah. Is, no, no, no. Anyways, and also, uh, a lot of you have been asking us about the upcoming American Atheist Convention. So stick around. We have some. We have details later Some on. deets. Yeah. We're going to be throwing some deets at you. Woo! Like, wow. what up? Crazy. Deet time. Oh no! Isn't DEET a insecticide? Uh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> That's what we're gonna be doing. <laughs> oh, okay, we're gonna be giving you DEET. Oh, all right, all right. Well, yeah. What have you got? You have anything good? Uh, well, okay. So if I say to you, Colorado City, Arizona, or Hilldale, Utah, mm. which are essentially actually the same it's town, the same town. It's right on the border. Yeah. Well, what do you think of? I think of polygamists. That's right. This is where Utah, this is where uh, fundamentalist LDS, FLDS uh, polygamists live. Mm-hmm. For the longest time, it was a, uh, a it, it was it was just a compound just for them. Right. They really didn't let anyone else in. No. And as a matter of fact, if you drove into these towns and, you know, if you're, in the area, which you'll never be unless you happen to be wanting to go there. Right. But if you, because it's literally not near anything. Right. But if you go there, you might well, have, you might have a fun experience. Go have a picnic there and find the, watch as the, right. bl- the black well, I mean, sedan or the black SUV pulls up and yeah, just yeah. watches you and drives around with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because that'll happen. Yeah. And this is a, this is a, an actual town. It's not like this is a gated thingy no no there's a little state highway that drives through if you're in a certain part of the state and you want to go to the north rim of the grand canyon you would go through mm. the, the, this town you know but anyways right. so yeah. it's not like it's completely um it's not a compound yeah and it's not i mean it is totally off the beaten path when you think of like where most beaten paths are and what they look like but there is a state highway that drives through the thing. right exactly uh and and yeah so Here's an interesting thing. Have you thing. ever driven through? I haven't. I oh, want to. Okay. We, you and I All should right. go. Yeah, yeah. We should I, do a I thing. have driven through. I've driven from uh, St. George to uh, to Canab. To Canab, right. You have to cut across the Arizona Strip. And you and I should, you right, you and I should really do that. Right through there. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> You're not excited about that, but... No, it makes me beyond uncomfortable. <laughs> it's so gross. We have to push ourselves, Frank. But for the, the show. Thi- the thing about that little town now is it's not quite what it used to be. No, and here's but what because happened. Because they broken up the trust that right. that owned most of the town. And and I and if you guys are interested in it, I highly encourage you to find the This American Life that they did about this thing. Mm. The, this, was it This American Life or was it Ra- oh, oh shit. I don't know if it's This American Life or if it's uh uh what the other one? Radio, uh, Radio Lab. Oh, okay. One yeah. of those awesome shows did a whole devoted a whole show to this town because here's what happened: uh, the church, and this isn't the downtown Salt Lake LDS Church. No. This is the fundamentalist FLDS Church. They commanded all of their people to uh, give all of their money to them, right? And then they dispersed. Goods. This right. was basically a communist society. It was, yeah. Uh, and they owned that the the church owned all of the buildings in the town. Right. Everyone's house, everyone's everything was owned by the it's church. The law of consecration. Right. This was talked about by early Mormon church mm-hmm. leaders mm-hmm. about, uh, and that's kind of how they were where they were aimed at going, and then they ended up backing off of it. Mm. The, the the big church ended right, up backing right, right, off right. of it. These yeah, guys did not. It's unsustainable. Well, yeah. You know, I mean, communism has a history of not working so well in, yeah. the, in the world. But also, like, this was... In small scale, like, in a small town... Like, you, Orderville. You can, you can make it work. Orderville was the last... was actually a functioning Utah town that actually was doing the law of conservation. Right, right. Well, so They were called... living the, the, the... What was it called? The something order. The, the, the 
What is it United, called? United, United, United Order. United Order. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Anyway, uh, so Colorado City and uh, and Hilldale were doing this for the longest time, and then there was a big lawsuit, a big to do. The church took it over, or the the state took it over, mm-hmm. took over the trust, mm-hmm. and administered the trust and sold off a lot of the, because they were I don't know they owed a lot to the state or something like that so the state was who can say I don't remember the whole thing go and look up that radio show if you want to learn real facts anyway what I'm getting to cuz I'm cuz I'm getting to the real story that I know about which mm. is recent which is that when the state did that they sold one of the houses to a couple uh named the cooks um okay. this this would be Ronald and Ginger Ginger Cook uh who uh bought who bought the house from the state. Okay. Uh they probably got a real good deal. So they thought, <laughs> "Hey, that's that sounds great. I'll just move in. I don't care if there's well, a bunch uh, of like fundies. a retirement home? Like what did they No, they're like, young. They, okay. They're young. So they just decided we're moving to Hilldale. I guess so. They got I mean, they really must have gotten a deal cuz why the hell would wow. anyone move okay. to Hilldale? All right. Uh, and then when they got there, they found that suddenly none of the public works were going to be hooked up to them. <laughs> Shut Water up. said no. Electric said no. Like the the city, the city basically put a stop to it. Okay. So they had to live in a trailer outside of their home that they had just purchased, and they uh, they had to fight tooth and nail just to get basic. Why would you do this? <laughs> Why would you? I mean, you know, like it's it, it's not an ugly area, but it's also not a very like. There's nothing. There's no reason to move to this area unless you're a polygamist. Unless you're FLDS, it does seem like like that. Why? I mean, there is proximity to the Grand Canyon, but not like close proximity. Well, there's proximity. There's semi close proximity to several beautiful national and state parks. There's Zion's up the way, yeah. right? Right. And okay. They're, they're not far. I mean, Southern That's Utah true. is gorgeous. Yeah. Uh, in a deserty sort of way. But still, you're like, yeah. Would 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 it ever, Dan, cross your mind <laughs> no. to move to a polygamous town just because you're getting a good deal on the house? No. This is a very stupid reason to move to a, a town. They, so they, 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 they have no connection to the town. They just decided to move there. Right. Am I really getting this right? Yeah. 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 And so here's what they did. They sued. Uh, the FLDS Church, and recently, oh. and just last month, the, they the fin- they finally won. Oh, because the church was putting pressure on the town to like the church owns the town. The church is the town. So, mm. so do you want to guess what they what they won? Water, five point two million dollars. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's I mean, why you moved to a small little you, town. Well, it's been years. <laughs> it's been years. But yeah, the uh they uh they they well, okay, so I guess oh, they, I guess weird. the towns are the ones that got sued. The that towns makes more sense of Colorado City and Hilldale. Yeah, okay. Now that um, makes sense because just, how could they sue So them? yeah, they sued the towns uh because they were discriminated against uh for being for not being members of the FLDS church. Gotcha. And they ended up uh winning 5.2 million. Which was actually more than they were asking for. Mm, don't you love that? But uh, but but the jury decided that a message must be sent. Oh, good for the jury. Yeah. Ooh. There you go. Wow. That'll teach you wife-having discriminators. <laughs> they have wives. That's they basically do. what they do. They, they have, do. They have many wives. Yeah. And then they kick out. Anyone, anyone who, yeah, they, they treat people badly. Yeah, it's not good. All right. So there you go. Well, I, uh, I'd i like to uh, go to Australia. Wow, that was, was, was that supposed to be the accent? No, I just said it. Oh, you just Australia. said it funny? Australia. <laughs> okay. Um, and uh, w- uh, because the, um, in Australia, the, uh, it's their, what is it, the national... Where did it go? Um, God damn it, I just had it. <laughs> uh, the NHMRC, which I'm assuming is like the National Health uh, and Medical Research Council. Okay. Um, has uh, released uh, a guide for doctors okay. on how to uh, talk to patients 
about the lack of evidence for homeopathic remedies. Oh, okay. In fact, they are going so far as to say that uh, homeopathic remedies are useless for human health. Which is true. Yeah. But they're saying it, and they're uh, doing something about it, which is nice. Yeah. It, 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 well, it, here's the thing. A lot of doctors are hesitant to badmouth any kind of uh, uh, quote-unquote alternative medicines, because what they don't want is for their patients to say, well, he doesn't believe in my alternative medicine. He doesn't know anything, and and not go back to their doctor. Right. Yeah. It's a it's a tricky one because well, you don't want to scare people off and yeah. have them just go full tilt into nonsense. Mm -hmm. Which uh, I don't know if any of our listeners are into homeopathy. I'm sorry, it's nonsense. <laughs> I've looked into it. I've read the research. It doesn't do anything. Yeah, yeah. The concept is false. Mm. And then they take the concept and then they dilute it. And then they dilute it some more, mm -hmm. and then they dilute it some more. Mm -hmm. Like, the most common... Because it's all about diluting the thing in water, right? Yeah. And they, they have, like, you know, the this C system where, like, you know, this is diluted to 30C. This is mm. diluted to 20C, oh, and okay. blah, blah, blah. But okay. what that ends up meaning is this. If you take one drop of whatever active ingredient it is, which isn't probably even active, right, and you put it into... In with 99 drops of water, right? Uh -huh. So you've got a whole ton, uh, a, a total of 100 drops. Right. So one drop to 100. Then you mix that all up. Then you, that's one C. Oh, okay. Then you take one drop of that. Oh, no. And put it into 99 drops of water. That's two C. Oh, wow. You mix that all up. You take one drop of that <gasps> and you just keep going. So literally, mathematically... By the time you're at 30C, which is what a lot of these things are, most of them, 30 is about average, I think. Okay. Or 30 is very common, anyway. Right. Okay. Once you get to 30C, according to Avogadro's number, we do the math, we know how molecules work, mm. you are unlikely to even have a single molecule of active ingredient in what you're taking. Oh, my God. You're literally just taking water. At that point, it's just water. Or, no. or sugar pill. And it's been declared, <laughs> basically by Australia, we'll say, useless. Exactly. Well, which is fantastic, right? It's fantastic, and they're but they're also saying that um, they're, um, you know, the, the, this guy that they're issuing is also uh, instructing doctors to warn patients about possible interactions between al any kind of alternative thing. And conventional medicines. Yeah. Um, to, to, I mean, because they're, they're like, listen, this is the scientifically proven one. This right. This is the one you should be doing because we've tested it and it's been shown to work. Right. And here's this hogwash. Right. Or, or here's this other thing that we have that may or may not have some use. Right. But hasn't been shown to have any use. And we don't know what the dangers are and we don't know what the effectiveness exactly. is. Exactly. It's one of those things, you know, it's fine. I have, I have no problem with, with, Believing that there are things out there that medical science hasn't yet figured out or hasn't yet proven is good that are good. That's out there. Mm -hmm. Sure. But until we have the data on it, we don't know the difference between, you know, it, there may be a thing that has a lot of good effect for 60% of people and then is really, really dangerous for the other 40%. Mm. We don't we don't know that because no one keeps stats on how badly something that that's their own product hurts people mm -hmm. they'll be happy to keep stats on how well it does for everybody or make some up but they don't keep stats on how until they're forced to they don't keep stats on how badly it hurts someone right. you know what i'm saying so right. like i'm I'm with tim minchin who said that you know what they call uh alternative medicine that's been proven to work medicine <laughs> they just call that medicine yeah yeah and until that point, you know, they don't. Anyway. Yeah. So anyways, I'm taking off my hat yes. to them. To is what I'm saying. Go Australia. Yes. We're, we're, we're fans. So all of you Aussies down under, uh, you can feel be, good about that. You can be proud of, of your land, mm. of your country for doing that. <laughs> anyway, um, <clears throat> I'm going to move now to Oklahoma, your 
Mm. Not home, home state, but your one of your home states lived there for a, for a goodly amount of time. You were there. Mm-hmm. Folks are still there. It was nice seeing them when we went on our trip. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go to the town of Bartlesville, Oklahoma. More of a city. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. It was the headquarters of um, Phillips Petroleum. Oh dear. That's yeah. a, that's a big. Deal. Everything's Phillips in that town. Just so you know. <laughs> okay. Phillips this. Phillips that. Phillips this. Phillips that. <laughs> Lots of uh, lots of fine art, uh, not Art Deco. Was it Art Deco that they have a lot of? Uh, uh, oh, uh, uh, they've got some good Frank Lloyd Wright. Oh, in that town. Oh, yeah. I, w- I would like to visit yeah. that town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds yeah. like a good thing. Here's what I wouldn't like to visit: their hospital. Oh, they why have. Not? They basically. It's not a big enough city that it has a large healthcare system in place. Is it named after a Phillips? Their hospital. Uh, it is named after a Phillips. <laughs> It is Jane Phillips Medical Center, to be exact. (laughs) Apparently, the Phillipses were Catholic. Oh, were they? I don't know, but Jane Phillips Medical Center is connected to a Catholic uh, uh, medical chain. You don't really expect that in Oklahoma. Well, there you go. But they were. Whether or not the population was, right? Well, the rich people in town were. Well, and the uh, and and the the hospital, the medical center. Is, is a Catholic, Catholic. is a Catholic run okay, medical cool. center. Okay. Well, here's the deal: they're the only one in town. They're the only game in town. So when what? they so when they issued a policy uh-huh. that said none of our doctors are allowed to prescribe birth control as birth control. Okay. That was all but one doc OBGYN in, in the, the entire whole town. town. No way. All but one. Well, he's cornered the market now right right you're right <laughs> one has to think that that's kind of a boon for him but a little bit of a problem for oklahoma's women for the women of bartles well, uh, yeah yeah it's so not that big of a city so so yeah that i think that's shocking this this is why this ladies and gentlemen is the moment where we learn why it's not okay to just say okay we'll make an exception for the catholics Mm. Okay, we'll make an exception for the X. Right. If you're going to be providing medical care, you have to provide the same medical care that everyone else provides because it may not be available to anyone uh, in any way except through you. Right. So that, I mean, this is why Obama must have been, this is why Obama was fighting to not let there be a religious exemption mm-hmm. from the providing of of, of birth control. Mm. Um, they did say that you could they, that their doctors could prescribe birth control uh, pills for treatment of ailments. I, I mean, there are several things that it treats other than just stopping having a baby. Oh, yeah. It's not just for contraception. Oh, no, yeah. Uh, excessive bleeding, sometimes right. headaches. So yeah. Some a lot of these things yeah. uh, in women uh, can be cu- helped with birth control. But a woman shouldn't have to pretend. Like she has one of those ailment, ailments because she wants birth control. Right. First of all, the Catholics are so stupid on this because birth control is a boon to the world. Right. Not having more kids is good now. And we're going to later hear some, somebody else who, uh, who thinks that having kids is the ultimate, is good in the universe. But it's not, as a matter of fact. We have too many people. We have more than enough people in the world. Yeah. You don't we don't There's, need everybody doesn't need to be having kids. Well, all you have to do is count the number of starving people. <laughs> right. Currently. Currently, yes. And just be like, mm, we might want to focus on the ones we already have. Right, right, right. And maybe take the population down a little bit if we're having trouble feeding everybody. Yeah. If we can't feed everybody, yeah. maybe we should think about that. Yeah. Anywho, uh they uh the uh the Jane Phillips Medical Center, the JPMC. Ooh, lovely. Uh, lovely. Has has now uh, retracted their uh, their policy. They 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 did a careful after there was huge outcry on Facebook and and all over mm. the, all over the interwebs. Mm-hmm. Um, they released a statement that said uh, that that it was at the doctor's discretion. Now. Oh well, good. As to whether or not they would prescribe this. Stuff. Oh well, how how big, mm-hmm. big of them? To right. Let, let the doctors provide the medical care services for their patients. Yes, yes. It does seem like it mm. would improve the doctor-patient relationship mm. if the doctor can provide the care that is required. Interesting. 
Oh. How wise. How wise. Oh, my God. What a fucking bunch of douchebags. <laughs> I mean, really, that's where we're going to put our foot down is birth control. It's not Damn an abortion. Straight. It's not an abortion. It's not even. It's nothing. You know what? It's not a thing. It's preventing an abortion, Dan. That's right. I cannot. I cannot tolerate that. <laughs> <When you're... laughs> that. That's how we need to be presenting that. Yeah. Like the birth control issue. It's, it's abortion prevention. It's abortion prevention yeah. pills. Yeah. I'm going to take my abortion prevention pills <laughs> now, <laughs> so I don't have to have that abortion later on. Right. How do you feel about that? Yeah. Pretty nice, right? Yeah. Good idea. We're all happy now. Hey, abortion. Hand out some abortion abor- prevention pills. Hand out some abortion prevention condoms. Yeah. That's all that yeah. is. That's all it is. That's all you're doing. Teenagers <laughs> when don't people, need abortions. When people don't want to have babies and you don't give them a way to stop babies from forming, uh-huh. they'll stop the babies from coming. Yeah. I'm all about reducing the number of abortions. Sure. I'm all about it. Well, Why should a I, woman have to go through... An unnecessary medical procedure. Right. Right? Yeah, absolutely. If you can prevent her from and, being pregnant in the first place. And it, can, and it costs money to have one yeah. of those and stuff. Give them the goddamn pill. Yeah. Morons. Yeah. God damn it. Keep All abortions right. legal. Sure. Because that option should be out every there. Every once in a while, something's going to get through. Well, not only know. that, but, you know, maybe maybe a mind gets changed here and there. Women are allowed to change their mind. It's she, their she, body. She could want to get pregnant and then not want to be pregnant anymore and fine. Right. But uh, I really don't care about the circumstances. No. Circumstances are none of my goddamn business. Exactly. Right. <laughs> Let's prevent some abortions. Let's have some abortion prevention pills out there. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way. Uh, uh, we're geniuses. Amazing. We're so In smart. <laughs> uh, do you know who Kate Mulgrew is? Dan, I believe I believe she is a captain. Is she? She not? is a captain. She's a Star Trek captain <laughs> on uh, Star Trek Voyager. She's 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 an actress. She's in well, who plays? If you're going to separate fact or, or real life from the wonderful fiction of Star Trek, which a lot of people have a hard time separating, <laughs> uh, then we if know we some must, people who might have some trouble with that if, separation. If we must do that, Dan, then yes, you're right. She's an actress. <laughs> But in my mind, she'll always just be Captain Janeway. Captain Janeway. <laughs> With her spunky hairdos and I don't know. And, 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 her, and her stern scowl. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen an episode of that show. Where she doesn't scowl? No, I've never seen an episode of the show. Oh, well, both of those are true. Okay. Yeah. 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 She's... <laughs> I think I've... Yeah, I've seen clips of her and she always looks like she's scowling. Yeah, it's a difficult role. Right. right? Because she has I mean, to play a strong I, woman. I don't know but that she she's also scowling. Was trying to be a woman. Right. I don't right? know that and she's scowling nice. any more than Patrick Stewart scowled. So it seems but like you an approach... notice it on a woman. How sexist of you, Dan. I know. She's she's so bossy. <laughs> she's a very bossy boss. Captain Janeway is so bossy. <sighs> she stops she needs to stop bossing people around. <laughs> Why can't she be more feminine? Why can't this female <laughs> leader stop telling people what to do? <laughs> right. Why can't the captain of the ship be a little less bossy all the time? Well, anyway. somebody should have been bossy with her. Um, oh, uh, she got herself in a little bit of hot water. No, um, she. Um, and this is where I'm not sure. I read something right before uh, we we started recording that leads me to believe that it may be not quite as bad as we thought it was. Anyways. Uh, I, there's this trailer going around right now for this film called The Principal, Ooh. and it's a, uh, a documentary. Um, about... Now you were doing that. That was Frank's vocal air quotes. In case, <laughs> in case anybody was confused as to why he said it that way, you couldn't see his finger air quotes, so he had to do the documentary. That's vocal air quotes, ladies and gentlemen, about uh, geocentrism. Uh, which is that, the idea that the Earth is at the center of the universe, and that's how God wants it, because the Earth is special, and we're special, and so therefore, we're at the center of the universe. And it says so in the Bible, and the Earth yeah. and, and the sun rotates around the Earth, not the other way around. Are they claiming that yeah. in this? Yes, they really? are. Really? Yes, they are. I didn't, I didn't know what, that it went that that's far. That's what geocentrism is. I thought that this is the kind of geocentrism that's about the universe. 
that, that basically our system isn't the center of the universe. Yeah, but then everything has to rotate around the center. Right, which the so, center of the solar system is the sun. I think they're nope, still the saying... center of everything is us, is the Earth. That's geocentrism. Okay. Nonetheless, be that as it may, that's not what I got out of the whole thing. Oh, okay. But, I mean, because like because they are trying to be... I mean, who knows? Who can who can keep it straight what these crackpots believe, right? Right. right. But nonetheless, um, so anyways, uh, this the filmmaker is Robert Sungenis um, or Sungenis or whatever you want to say, however you want to say his name. Um, and he has a crapo website blog thing called Galileo Was Wrong, The Church Was Right. Um, and uh, nonetheless, so she, Kate Mulgrew narrates this trailer that's going around and in her statement i thought that it meant that also that she um um narrated the whole film Mm. um her statement she says i apologize for any confusion that my voice on this trailer may have caused so she might have just been a hired voice for the trailer to drum up business for the film attention for the film Uh. because my guess is the narrator in this film has to say some truly outrageous things that would be hard to conceal from any, you know, because she's mm. saying she was duped into it, basically. Right. That uh, she was tricked in. This is the same film that um, Lawrence Krauss um, came out on record as having also been duped into, or perhaps he, the the filmmaker, bought footage of him. He doesn't even remember anything about this interview that right. is appearing in the film. Right. And so he doesn't know. Well, did 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 he? Did the interviewer get this under false pretense and I signed some weird release that, well, all right, I signed the release. Or is it some footage that was just floating around that they that either existed in the public domain or that the the producers of this film licensed from another uh, filmmaker or something like he just doesn't know. Right. Um, and so he came out with an with a little uh, little thing on Slate kind of explaining his position on the whole thing and he's going as far as saying that he doesn't even want to like talk about it and he doesn't want to mention the name and he doesn't want to have people really making any fuss about this because it just needs to go away yeah and i think that and and, and he says he's not going to sue and he's not just and he's not going to go after them now who knows maybe he's already talked to a lawyer and the lawyer's like dude if you signed a release you signed a release right i'm sure he um, did talk to a lawyer about this but but nonetheless, he's saying the best way for this thing to go away is not for me to sue, but for it's for it's for people just to stop talking about it and for the producers to have hopefully spent a lot of money on special effects and make none of it back. Well, they're going to make it back. There's a market for this, right? This is going to go to all the dumb little creationist museums around the country. Right, right, right. Or it's going to be, you know, direct dvd sales to christian families and it's gonna be in christian bookstores like they're gonna make money so what you need to do in my opinion is to raise some serious um raise your voice a little bit well, yeah. and denounce it well the thing raise, is that he, what he's saying is i don't want my fame to cast any light on this fringe thing right but the truth is it's got the light right so let his light cast Cast light on you. Use the platform that you now have because of this mm-hmm. stupid controversy right. to say, nope, here's the truth. Yeah. He's absolutely wrong and, the, and he's stupid. Yeah. Talk There's, truth. And use, and use his light. Yeah. By the way, I'm on his website. I was just looking at some stuff. He very clearly believes that the sun rotates around the earth. He does. Very clearly. See, I can't even get my head around any of this crap. He is right, however, that the moon also does rotate around the earth. <laughs> he has gotten that part right. <laughs> Uh, so I, I, I mean, I, I'll give him that much. Credit. So, okay. So, I mean, this is like, <sighs> I mean, he's, he's saying Galileo was wrong. No, you're right. If Galileo was wrong, <laughs> he's right. going all the way back to, I mean, to me, this is literally what he's saying is all of this stuff that we've built centuries of new knowledge on. Oh No. We need to go back to the beginning of this that we've already accepted as true because it is true. Right. You couldn't have done any of this forward thinking science. Right. If that weren't true. It, right. None of it would have worked. Right. But we're going to erase all of that. Everything that we know, all the things that are in cosmos, that right. 
dopey, dopey Neil deGrasse Tyson knows nothing. <laughs> He's clearly not. Well, even... I mean, the, the and the only way to explain, I mean, if I start thinking about this, I'm like, well, you know, but I mean, we have probes and and little robotic spaceships that have been going around the the solar system to right. to Mars, and they've done this and they've they've slingshotted around this and around that, and it's like. You would have to have every single one of these scientists lying. Right. Because they wouldn't be able to do the math. They wouldn't be able to get these things going to the right place. Right. Well, and it's not just that. It's like... You know what I mean? Like, how can somebody live in this world with everything that's going on and and, and just know. deny it? Yeah. You can't just... You, yeah. It's, it's, like deny, it's like the flat earthers now. There are still people who want to claim that the earth is flat because it says so in the Bible. Yeah. And but, all we have to do is go up in an airplane and you can verify it for your goddamn self. You just have to go out to Wendover and go up and... <laughs> right, right. Wendover, Nevada. You can look. There's a real long stretch of road and you can see the curvature And it, the it's earth. so flat. It actually... But it's not flat, right? When, right, That's the main, right. when you're driving it, you're like, my God, this roadway is straight and flat. It's literally the straightest, flattest roadway and, probably in the United States of America. I, it's quite possible. And when because you it goes it, across the, the Bonneville Salt Flats. Right. And so when you get up onto this little, um, little hill, little hill sure. over in Windover, and you look back, you actually see the, the road curving. It stretches away from you. <laughs> and you actually, yeah, you see it. And you, so you can you bend. can see the curvature of the earth. As a matter of fact, when you right and there. I when you Boop. and I went to and Salt Lakers, do yourself a favor. Next time you go to Wendover, if you go out there, this is the closest place for Utah for Salt Lakers to go and gamble. Right. That's why it's that's why this town exists. Right. If you go out there, go to the little tourism booth, <laughs> which is adorable. You and I went there, Frank, Yeah, uh, and they have a little pamphlet that's like things, you know, interesting points about Wendover, mm -hmm. and it's trying desperately to come up with anything that's interesting about Wendover that isn't a casino. Well, yeah, yeah. And one the of the bullet points is actually curvature of the earth. Yeah, yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah. The Enola Gay trained there. The Enola Gay did train there, so, yep. you know, they had a good hand in blowing up a whole lot of people. Yeah, they have that. Yeah. They have that. That's yeah. going for them. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to move on. Uh, we'll go to Poland. Okay. Poland. If uh, we must. I've been to Poland. Anyway, Poland is a... It, they they have recently announced uh, there was a reversal uh, of, of a court ruling. So now it looks like the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster may become a legit church in Poland. Yay! <laughs> or I think the correct uh, thing is pasta. Hey, right, right, ramen. Uh, it's it's. Uh, I, I I only brought this up because I think it's 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 funny that it's happening around the world, mm. and I wanted to hear what you had to say about me F FSM. Yeah, because you and I have never really talked about the Flying Spaghetti Monster Church and the whole phenomenon surrounding it. Their website claims that they are a real church. Mm -hmm. It also claims that they were founded uh, in secret by pirates, mm -hmm. and and, mm -hmm. and uh, it claimed, well, in your church you can claim anything about your founding, can't you? Indeed, you can, and I think um, that's the whole point of yeah. Uh, I mean, I think it's also. I think it's delightful. There doesn't seem to be it, it seems to be very fun, mm -hmm. it, and uh, from what I've from what I've gathered, it. Uh, I don't know. It seems to not be terribly mean spirited. So I say, go for it. They seem to be focusing on themselves and just being delightful in splashing about in religious silliness. Right. Exactly. And knowing that it's silly and having a good time with it. So why not? Why the hell not? Yeah. And if you can kind of poke holes into freedom of religion, you know, situations and, yeah. and uh, you know, rile up some people. Right. You might as well. Right. You might and, as well. And be, you know, so it started as a response to, uh, I believe it was Kansas, mm -hmm. uh, trying to get ba intelligent design into the textbooks yeah. Yeah. of their science, their science textbooks. And so they wrote in, they, they, they basically... They had uh, their own origin story. Yeah, they had this yeah. whole story of, and they said, well, we want equal time too. Yeah. I mean, if these, if we're just presenting, quote unquote, the, the alternative possibilities Poss right. here here is a possibility here's another one. as founded 
as credible right as exactly. theirs exactly we've yeah. we've got a we've got a whole a whole thing right and uh, and and then it just caught on and uh you can now be a pastafarian minister oh it's lovely you can yeah. you can marry people there was one guy that in recently in uh dunkirk new york who was actually sworn into his he was elected as a as a city council member <laughs> and was sworn in <laughs> Wearing a colander on his head mm. because that's the official headgear headwear of what's do they have a sacred book? Is it like a recipe book or uh, I don't know on that. They have him his they hand need a, on a, they on need a, a recipe book. book. Yeah, exactly. But he and, was just uh, sworn in uh, hand up and uh, with a colander on his that's head. That's fantastic. These people look silly, but around the world, people are like fighting for their right to wear a colander in their like <laughs> ID picture. Yeah, we we. Talked about one of yeah, those. Yeah, somebody in like well, Sweden or something like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, uh, go for it. I, 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 it's just, I think that's great. So pretty soon we'll be seeing colanders all over Poland. <laughs> I guess. Excellent. It's a very, it's a very Catholic country. Mm. When I drove through there, I'll tell you what. Literally, like about every five miles along the country roads that we were driving along, you'd see. Not, not even that. Probably every two or three miles. <laughs> You would see uh, either a little little shrine on the side of the road to you know some saint mm-hmm. to Mary or some saint or whatever, or you'd see a a, a cross, a crucifix with a Jesus mm-hmm. on it. Mm-hmm. And what was really funny is that the crucifixes were frequently like nine or twelve feet tall and had little tiny Jesus on it, like the, <laughs> these big crosses. They got with, the scale all wrong. The scale was so off. Yeah. It was like little baby baby sister Jesus. Up on the cross. Mm. Really cute. Are there any baby Jesus crucifixes? Because <laughs> there should be. People, I, mean, I think people do understand that Jesus wasn't a baby when he was crucified. I kind of want a, a baby Jesus <laughs> crucified. You take the Jesus out of the manger in your little Straight onto your the crucifixion. Crash. Yeah, why not? And just nail that bad boy up. I mean, I know why nobody's done it. <laughs> Because it doesn't make sense and it's horrific. It's horrific. Yeah. It's not that it doesn't make sense. That's true. It's There's... that it's horrific. It's just, yeah. Murder, but nonetheless. Murdering a dude is bad enough. Doing it to a, a little baby is awful. But somebody could draw the picture. Sure. <laughs> I want someone to draw the picture. Oh, my God. <laughs> you're, you're, you're not doing the be careful what you wish for thing at all right now. <laughs> it's Why gonna, not? I guess so. It'll pop up on so, our Facebook page I bet- now. I bet if you Googled it right now, it already exists. <laughs> Crucifying baby Jesus. Crucify I want to baby Jesus. Okay. Yeah. Well, anyway, somebody's going to put it on our Facebook now. Please. Okay. <laughs> we might have to remove it. Uh, or right. not. Or not. It sounds delightful to me. Anyways, um, I want to talk about a, a kerfuffle oh, um, yes. that happened uh, this last week at Brandeis University. Yeah. Um, they uh, reneged on an honorary degree. For, that they were going to issue uh, to uh, Aeon Hirsi Ali, mm. um, who is a uh, she's a former Muslim. She's an atheist now, uh, and she she actually uh, she sort of famously uh, she was the, the 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 black Muslim woman who was in the um, Dutch Parliament. Mm. If you, do you remember that whole thing? Do you remember that? No, I remember it happening. Okay. Uh, I remember when it happened, when she was elected. I remember hearing about it. And then uh, there was also this thing where she wrote the screenplay for a film. Um, shit, what was the name of the film? Um, I can't remember what the name of the film was. But uh, the, do- the the director ended up being um, sort of assassinated in the streets. Oh, Do you remember oh this? that I did read about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so she was, she was the one who wrote this screenplay that... Muslims, you know, felt was evil and needed to be, you know, the people involved needed to be killed. Right, right. right. Um, and she, uh, she's from, she was born in Somalia um, and underwent female genital mutilation in the form of female yeah. circumcision. And, uh, and so she's been a, um, a, a fierce and outspoken uh, advocate for women's rights. Mm-hmm. And, Specifically uh, the right not to have their, their lady bits cut off. That's the one. Yeah. But she's also against um, um, circumcision for male babies. Sure. Well. Absolutely. Um, and uh, and so she kind of, 
uh, has uh, Muslims and Jews uh, against her because of some of the stuff that she's been talking about. And she's, she's, she is a vocal critic of Islam. Mm. Uh, and, uh, well, anyways, pressure was, uh, was, uh, <laughs> placed on to Brandeis and, uh, they're back. They backed off. Wow. Um, because they, they were inviting her to speak at their, uh, convocation. And, uh, she, uh, uh, Yeah. They, uh, because she is such an advocate for women, and uh, in, 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 instead they, they, they caved. They caved to outside pressures from the Jewish and Muslim community who want her to be silenced and shut up and pushed to the side. In and fairness, she, Frank, <laughs> she does want them to stop doing the awful things that they really like to do. Right. In fairness to them, that's not... They want to keep doing those things. Yeah, I know. They like those things. I know. I know. Cutting off bits of genitals is apparently great. Uh, it's a delight. Yeah. To them. Apparently. So maybe. Yeah. So clearly, clearly she's someone who should be stopped. I mean, she's not She's not completely without fault. No. As, as nobody is. I'm, uh, and she does like. I'm sure she can. She get definitely bossy. does. <laughs> she definitely does. You know, cross. <sighs> See, that's the thing. I don't know that she crosses a line that I have any problems with with, right. with what she says about Islam. She, she's just extremely vocal, and she yeah, denounces it. And she says it is a violent religion, and that they're that they're that she says things that are you know that get people riled up, such as something along the lines there are no moderate muslims that there can be no moderate muslims that it is a religion of extremism and darkness and and she clearly had her own experience with it which right, is right which has you know colored her her reaction to it but at the same time it is also a religion that does allow for a lot of bad things to happen yeah and that's not to let other religions off the hook by saying that right because let's face it christianity does not have clean hands no, no, know, no, 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 no. Th- and different forms history. of different forms of Christianity have different kinds of dirt on their hands, exactly, or blood. Yeah, but I think you know. I think the idea here is, it you're not allowed to criticize religion that strongly. Exactly. The, I mean, even people on our side. I'll, I read an article not too long ago, mm-hmm. and you and I are pretty moderate when it comes to our atheism. Yeah, we as are as not go, the grumpy, right. you know. Oh, religions are shitty and ma ma ma. We're right. we're not angry atheists. We're right. not we're not that. So I feel like we're in the pretty pretty center spectrum. Right. Um but I mean we call people out when they need to be called out and yeah. stuff, but I read a thing, an article that was like people who hurt the atheist movement. And they took Sam Harris to task because uh because he hurts the atheist movement because of because he's so Islamophobic. Oh, wow. Now, I've read, uh, uh, what was the one, not Letter to a Christian Nation, the one that was that was the big version of that. Uh, the, the Faith. The End uh, of Faith. End of Faith, yeah. Uh, and, and in it, he devotes an awful lot of time to taking down Islam. Oh, yeah. And uh, it, like, there's, it's a many, many pages. Uh-huh. It, it kind of bogged down as a book. I'll just say, as a read, it kind of yeah. bogged down. But sometimes things got to be said. Right. You know? And the thing is... You know what? Take his argument to task if you if you want to. Uh-huh. You know, if you disagree with his argument, that's fine. But nothing that he said came across to me as Islamophobic. Right. It was just, I'm going to look at what I see. Right. I'm going to look at the facts that I have in front of me. Right. And really, really be honest and open about them. Right. And that's all he did. Right. That's not Islamophobia. That's reality. And she's accused of being an Islamophobe as well. Right. And so I guess kind of like... <sighs> You're just not it's allowed a, It's a really to, interesting to... thing because like I think we could also be called Islamophobic for sure. some of the things that we've said about Islam. The thing that I Christ- just said. Christianophobic. And, sure. And I mean, we're religiophobes, right? But we're not. But we're not. No. Nope. But I... I totally get that people could could level that accusation at me, and more and more, I'm way less concerned about that. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like... I, yeah, it's true. We couldn't give a shit. Right. About your accu- accusation that we're right. Islamophobic. Because like, Cause we're, cause we're not. Right. And if, and if we I, say something that actually is and someone calls us on it... Yeah. We're, we'll be fine. Right. We will, we will amend. Because I don't think... I mean, we, I don't know. But anyways. Blah. Anyways, this is happening. Brandeis caved. And it really does. It brings up the issue of how how protected religion is as yeah. as as this idea and inst- all the institutions of religion they are so protected against criticism yeah you're not allowed and 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 criticism of things that need to be denounced yeah. truly truly denounced right and with a loud and unwavering voice denounced yeah but- the end of male circumcision it should be outlawed. Yeah, well, I mean, at if, least if amongst an, children. Yeah, if an adult male wants his foreskin cut off, sure, go right ahead, cut go it off. Go for it. That's just and you know what? Just... We're right now. We're pissing some of our listeners off because it's so culturally because that's so culturally ingrained that people think that that at least in the U.S. right the the people the pe- a lot of people even on our side of things don't get that. Well, I mean, I'm circumcised. Like high, I, so am I. And and but people will be, oh well, it's hygienic and it's this and it's that. Right. You're still mutilating your child. Right. It's technically mutilation. Right. And I don't. I, you're cutting off a part of his body. That sounds harsh. Yeah. And, but what you're doing actually is harsh. Right. And so I, it's not like, I, and I'm not going to criticize. I'm not going to say that my parents were awful people for it, having w- me it circumcised. It was what you did. Yeah, in the seventies, but we need to we need yeah. to back off of and mutilating whatnot. our children. Yeah, mutilation is just wrong. Yeah, and and you know the way that they do the female genital mutilation, the way that they do that in in Africa, well, is, that's is it horrific. is a different thing, and it happens usually yeah. when the when the girl is like about to approach puberty, so she's right. totally aware of what's going on. She gets to feel all of that fear coming up. I mean, at least it was we were babies when it happened, so we didn't like. Everything was scary at that point. <laughs> I think I think it is worse to do it to a to a much more sentient child. Yes, and they and do it, and they don't do, do it in a hygienic way. And it's they don't awful. do it in a hygienic way, and they truly do leave the woman uh, in a in a situation where it is very difficult to uh, have pleasure. Right. Right. In sex. Well, and that's kind of the point. And that's the point. And clearly. It is still possible to have pleasure with a circumcised penis. Right. Although they say that they cut off, the, the foreskin has a shit ton of, of oh, nerve me. endings, and it would make it it's amazing. Not... Uh, apparently, it's, uh, it, I mean, yeah, you're losing a lot of your sensation by, yeah. by losing that foreskin. Yeah. I don't know. I, <sighs> you know, the truth is, and, and the other thing is that, like, yeah, I, like, I'm sort of half, def- I'm, I'm, make, I'm making circumcision less of a, egregious of a sin than, uh, than, the female genital mutilation because mm-hmm. it's a baby and all that stuff. And I do think it is. But when, but I mean, when it's practiced by these Orthodox Jews who like the Moyle actually puts his mouth on the baby's penis yeah. to it's suck the problems, blood away. And problems. then, and you know, the baby babies end up with herpes sometimes. Yeah. That's horrific. Yeah. That's, that should be outlawed. I don't mm-hmm. care what your religion is. That should be against the law, but it's not. Yeah. Anyhow. But you can't say anything about religion. Right. Or, you know. But it kind of is the point of what we're doing here, isn't it? Right, right. We're trying to, we're, <laughs> we're trying to change things. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Uh, anyway, if you have uh, stories about mutilation that you want to share with us, or anything else that you want to say, you can write to us, uh, podcast at thankgodimatheist.com. Or you could leave us a voicemail at 424-666-8442. Right. Uh, you can go to our Facebook page. That's awesome. It's facebook.com slash TGI Atheist and like us there. Yes, indeed. And uh, all right. We're going to take a quick break. Patty break. Patty break. <laughs> uh, and uh, this... Oh, piss her. We're just going to get enlightened. Enlightened by <laughs> by by one Mister Mister Patty. Yeah, he's he's a good one, Pat Roberts. You got to remember from the Bible. You look carefully at the Bible. What would have happened in Jesus' time if two men decided they wanted to cohabit together? 
uh, they would have been stoned to death. So Jesus would not have baked them a wedding cake, nor would he have made them a bed to sleep in, because they wouldn't have been there. But um, we don't have that in this country here, so that's the way it is. But ladies and gentlemen, I think we have to recognize uh, what uh, I said a few years ago. Uh, at that point, uh, homosexual marriage was condemned. Homosexuality itself was considered a, a pathology. And now those who were practicing that activity uh, have turned and become the oppressors of those who hold to deeply held religious points of view. It, the, the tables have turned, and I, I think uh, it's just the way it is. But why? What is it about gays? What is it about abortion? Have you ever thought why they're on the forefront right now? Well, number one, both of them deny the reproduction of human species. An abortion uh, destroys the product of conception, kills a baby in the womb. Uh, homosexuality is no chance of uh, conception, and it, it is a, a meaningless exercise because it doesn't go anywhere. The Bible intends males and females to live together in a particular union called marriage and to bring forth children. But this denies that, and it's as if the devil is trying to say, I'm going to destroy your progeny any way I can. And if you will kill your babies, that's fine, I'm with you. Uh, if you will deny the chance of having babies, that's fine too. But <clears throat> I want to destroy your, your opportunities to reproduce. It's a very serious thing, and we're not talking about it, and we need to. We need, to, as, as a society, need to realize where the attack is coming, because it is definitely an attack. But, hey, that's for another day, perhaps. Wendy? Jesus said, I came to give life. Life! And, and the give devil it more wants abundantly. to steal, yes, kill, and destroy. Yeah, all right. Well said, pal. <laughs> Good Lord. What? Why? Frank, have you ever asked yourself why these gays are coming to the forefront right now? Wow. <sighs> Frank, and I have got news for him. Whoa. It's it's not a pointless exercise. <laughs> yes it is. <laughs> you can't make babies. Stop having sex. You stop having all so that. So far in my life I wouldn't say that it's sex. been pointless. Well, I mean, if it has been, so has my all of my sex. Yeah, that's true. Cuz I don't want you no, haven't I, you haven't reproduced. No, have I'm you? not trying to reproduce. Yeah, I got, are there any little dans running around? That we, that we don't know about? Not that I'm aware of. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure I'm safe on that front. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, you know, Andrea takes the uh, anti-abortion pills. Good. And everything. Good. So, yeah. you know, we're, we're, we're not trying. So I'm, having, <laughs> I'm doing a pointless exercise as well. well a delightful, happy, and it, yeah. pointless exercise. Yeah. And, and is, there, is there something in here also that's sort of... He misses the good old days. <laughs> right. I think there's something wistful in everything Pat Robertson says <laughs> about the good old days. You know, it used to be an abomination. It used, it used to be. It used to be. We, it, time was know. when we could hate on them, queers, yeah. as, best, as much as we wanted, and everybody knew it was the right thing. Yeah. Now what's happening? Yeah. It's all confused and mixed up. Helter Skelter. It's all mimbledy pimbledy. I don't get it. <laughs> oh, good lord! Uh, well, we had some people write into us. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. We have we we we, we have been uh, written, written to. to. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> a little strange moment there. Um, Erica wrote to us. Hi, Frank and Dan. Uh, hi. <laughs> and this is our yeah. This is our friend Erica. Oh hi, double hi. Yeah, double hi to you. Um, she says, I was listening to the podcast where you were talking about the girl who wrote a letter to God, and mm. the mail carrier responded. Right. Oh, yeah, 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 right? yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the, to remind you listeners. I know where uh, she's going with She this. wrote a letter yeah. to God, and uh, and the letter came, and, and a response came back. This this girl, her dog had died, and mm. she was like, you take care of my doggy, and blah, blah, blah. Right. And a response came back with a book about you know, losing pets yeah. by Mr. Rogers and, and like this whole thing. And it was signed like God as, as dictated to an angel. Right. It, well, so, so I don't 
Erica says, well, I had to run it by the authority, which in this case is her boyfriend who works for the United States Postal Service and yeah. was a mail carrier for 15 years. Yep. Uh-huh. And he said that what she did what she did was actually against the law. He he said all he also said morally very inappropriate. She violated the quote sanctity of mail, which states that quote suppliers must not read, open or search mail. Also, if she didn't put a stamp on the package and placed it in the mailbox, it is also breaking the law. Uh-oh. Apparently. <laughs> I don't know if she stamped it or not. The funniest part is uh, when he thought about it, he said, I guess this falls into the letters to Santa category. Apparently, the USPS has a special program where they volunteer to respond to all the letters postmarked uh, and postmark it the North Pole. Right. But he says those go through the post office and it is a sanctioned program. So there could be some legal. Tr- God is breaking the law. Oh, my God. That's mail fraud. God. <laughs> That's how they got Al Capone. Oh, that's right. <laughs> no, his was like tax evasion, wasn't it? I thought they got him on mail fraud. Oh, I don't know. I thought it was something like really silly. He was he was answering some some little girl's god letters. <laughs> yeah, he had hobbies. He had hobbies. He, had, he was sure. actually he's actually a, he was a really good guy. He's a very sweet man. Really nice. Very really, sweet, really nice sweet. guy. You'd be surprised. Yeah. Um, Tanya wrote in. Tanya said, I've been listening to your show. Oh, hi, Frank and Dan. I've been listening to your show for about a year now, Mm. and I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Mm. Uh, Good. Thank you. I'm a Utah native, so that might make me a little biased. Well, maybe. Frank's not a Utah native. No. He likes us. Yeah. (laughs) That's allowed. Anyway, uh, I was listening to your podcast 124 last week where you talked about the BYU Groper. If, uh, if you if you listeners remember, uh, there's on on Brigham Young University's campus. There's a guy that's running around groping women. He's a serial gropist. And I wasn't really looking forward to what you guys had to say about it, but to my surprise, I was surprised. <laughs> you weren't being insensitive, rape apologizing, sexist uh, assholes, mm-hmm. much unlike my coworkers a few days before. Mm. So thank you both. Thank you for being ever present beacons of hope. That tell me that not all Utahns are ignorant and not all men are total dickbags. Oh. Well, Tanya, we're glad we could persuade you that not all the men are awful. Yeah. 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 Some of us That's, are good. Some some are good. And we're and you know what? It's just a matter of training. Guys are trained to be douchebags sometimes. Mm-hmm. We're training them not to be. Hopefully. That's, Hopefully people that's are our, paying that's attention. Our, that's our goal. Don't be a douche. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you take one thing away from this podcast, no. it's not to be a douche. Stop being douchey. Right. If you happen to be. Uh, why don't you play some uh, voicemail? We'll, uh, we got one more. Uh, do you want, should I just do this last email and then we'll do some yeah, voicemails? Yeah, and then we'll just do the voicemails on, on All right. one, one big group. <clears throat> Hey, Frank and Dan, this is Josh from Twin Falls. I was listening to this week's podcast and heard Jesse from Denver share his story. Being someone that has been immensely helped out by the TGIA family. Oh, that's nice. I feel like this is my chance to jump in and give back. Uh, Jesse, I too was raised in the Assemblies of God and and the guilt programming uh, that denomination of that in that denomination is powerful. I remember having a vivid dream when I was six or so about being drowned by Jesus in a swamp. Dear God. Yeah. What Uh, what are these people teaching children? um, Swamp drowning Jesus. Apparently, we need to do a little bit more. We might need to do a segment about Assemblies of God. Why don't you guys send us some some info on Assemblies of God? That would be really useful to us. Just give us a primer. So that we can, uh, a launching pad, so that we can talk about it. Yeah. And maybe we'll do something about it. Uh, it does say, after he said that, he said it says in parentheses, Dan, insert joke here, it's getting a little heavy. So, anyway, I, I don't have a joke, but yeah. but we did do a little pause to lighten yeah. the mood. Okay. Anyway, after leaving the church, I too struggled with bouts of depression, despite feeling freed of the shackles that had held me for many years. Um I finally went to go see the, my general practitioner, and I was diagnosed with a mild anxiety disorder. Hmm. I, was, I was self-deprecating myself into depression. Hmm. I feel this deep self-loathing was programmed into my cognitive wiring uh, through huh. the guilt trips I sat through on a bi-weekly basis. Oh my uh, God. Bi-weekly? Does that mean twice a week? Or does it mean once every other week? I don't know. Doesn't sound I bet good. there's midweek. I bet there's like I bet there's midweek. night or yeah. something. Ugh. <sighs> Gross. I would strongly encourage you, 
uh, says Josh to Jesse, uh, I would strongly encourage you to reach out to professionals. Let them help you kick this creeping depression. I thought it would be an awkward conversation to start with my doctor. Hey, doc, my brain is broke. But you have to remember that this is what these people do for a living. Yeah. If your kidney wasn't functioning properly, you would get dialysis. If you have allergies, you would take a histamine suppressant. Likewise, the serotonin levels in my brain are messed up, so I take a selective serotonin re- reuptake inhibitor. Wow. Yeah. Okay. It's as, it is only as big a deal as you make it. Uh, only you will know what's best for you. Like Dan said, therapy worked for him. Seeing my doctor worked for me. I would encourage you to reach out uh, to your support network and discuss this with someone who cares about you. Discuss how you feel, discuss the options, and take the next steps in your journey. By the way, Jesse, you are a great person despite what your pastor said about you. Jesus, these pastors. My, I'm, what is I this? suddenly need to know more about this because that sounds terrifying to me. I can't. I, I, yeah. Because it's two guys and they built like... So he just said that he had a dream of being like drowned by Jesus, and the other guy dreamt of he had he had something too. horrifying as well, like some some something involving Jesus doing awful things, or to just him. yeah, just looking no, on, looking yeah. on in disapproval, and well, it was more than disapproval. It yeah. was it was a violent Jesus, God, violent thing. violent Jesus sucks. Anyway, yeah. Josh closes by saying, Dan and Frank, keep up the amazing work. Feel free to pass on my email address to Jesse if he needs someone to cheer him on. Oh, nice. I owe you guys a tall one. Thanks, Josh. That's amazing. Thank you, Josh. Thank you very much, Josh. Uh, that, that, was, uh, that was very kind. So, Jesse, if you do want his email, reach out to us and we'll get it to you. All right. Uh, well, let's move on to the voicemails. Um, last week, uh, we talked about... Um, well, I, I read my patriarchal blessing, and I ended up posting it onto... Um, our uh, blog page, our, thank God I'm atheist. Our blog page, which is which is halfway through its, it's transition, it's transitioning in, into. Right. I think it's in its, its pupa phase, or it's, is it? It's is it mid- larval? metamorphosis? <laughs> it's, yes, it's, indeed. It, it, it's emerging from its cocoon. It's yeah, it, but we, we can't help it along. It has to do it all by itself, right? right. Or else, if we nudge it, it won't it be might strong, die. and it will it die. Won't build up those muscles. That it so, needs, so that strength. It takes the time that it takes. So we're it's it's. But it's you happening. can go there now, and you can see uh, you can see Frank's yeah. patriarchal. Blessing. You can read it. I put both pages, the front and the back of the thing. Scanned them in. They're up there. Um, but anyways, we talked about that last week, and uh, so uh, Brent called in um uh, to talk about his experience with his patriarchal blessing hey frank and dan um this is brent in uh florida and i was listening to the podcast about the patriarchal blessing and um which is pretty funny but i remember um mine and that i was an adult um when i got mine because i had converted from fundamentalist uh other stuff and um i talked to the patriarch for about five minutes before um, we went back in the little office and um, had the blessing and stuff. And I remember thinking the whole time he's given it to me that he is just telling me everything that I told him. Like, you know, I, we talked about hobbies and I tell him, I, you know, how much I read books all the time. And so my patriarchal blessing was how um, much studying of the scriptures I would do. I'm like, yeah, of course you would say that. I just told you I like to read. So any anyway, rate, it was a fun show, and keep up the good work. Bye. <laughs> oh my God! Not even a creative one. Well, what is he going to do? It, it, he hasn't been trained in the right. arts of mediuming. So, I mean, did this guy, did my patriarchal bless or uh, the patriarch that I went to, did he like look at me and go, "My God, this little queer." <laughs> and that, is that why he's like, there's a young lady now being prepared for you? No, I think that's pretty boiler, boiler plate. The you young that's, lady that's thing boy is... thing? The young all lady... The boys get that. Yeah, yeah. And all the girls get, there's a young man that's being that's prepared bullshit. for you. That's bullshit. But, but I think the the whole winning personality thing from yours probably yeah. came from your your the, when you introduced yourself to him and stuff. Probably. You weren't yeah. a dud. You weren't a total dud when you introduced yourself. So he's like, oh, you have a winning personality. I've always been smiley. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You're friendly. Except when I'm grumpy. Except when you're grumpy. And then I'm not. Then you're not. And it's... I <laughs> I shudder to think what it's like. <laughs> All right. Uh, so um, here is uh, the... Exp- I'm just going to play this one. Uh, I think he, he says what all that he needs to be said. Hey, guys. This is Matt calling from New York. Uh, we uh, I took my son and wife to the... Uh, Natural History Museum on Sunday, 
this past weekend uh, to see the new pterosaurs uh, exhibit. Uh, it was really exciting. And then on the way out, we decided to go into the big sphere that has a, a video of the Big Bang Theory, um, sort of sh- showing the Big Bang, and it actually has incorporated uh, the new findings on the Big Bang, which I was just absolutely uh, blown away by. On the way in, there was a sort of gruff security guard who kept saying, come on in and see the uh, see the Big Bang Theory and, uh, and watch a movie that, that basically covers uh, the beginning of the universe uh, with, from matter, from the point of view of matter and energy. And, uh, and the movie happened, and as we're leaving, that same security guard, as, he, as we were leaving, said, and I had to write it down because I couldn't believe it, uh, he said, uh, all right, that was the Big Bang Theory, uh, as, uh, as the, um, whatever you believe, it's all the same, uh, God or the Big Bang Theory, whatever you believe, it's all the same. And I and my wife, uh, we looked at each other in absolute astonishment, thinking that in the house of Neil deGrasse Tyson, how could you possibly say something like that? Anyway, I love the podcast. Uh, just thought I'd share. Um, and uh, keep it up. Thanks. Blasphemy. Yeah. Blasphemy. In, in the house. In, <laughs> indeed, in the house of Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yes. Oh. Somebody needs to talk to this uh, security guard. No, literally, you need to not be writing to us you, yeah. or, or to calling us. You need to be calling them that because they cool. need to know about this guy. Yeah. That's not acceptable. Yeah. Not cool. I was just there, too. Oh, yeah? Were you? Yeah. We, I, we, Did my you wife see and the I thing went... he was talking about? Yeah. 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 Uh, I, by the way, I, what I didn't get to see was those pterosaurs. They just oh. barely opened. But, uh, but yeah, it, it, it's worth going. Also, there's a... There's, there's a, a Dome, you know, they have the the, the dome theater, dome, yeah, where you sit and you look at the ceiling and stuff. Yeah, and they've yeah. got the they've got an expanded, uh, basically, it's it's similar to the to the little video that he saw. Mm. Um, it's it's in the upstairs of the of the sphere. Oh yeah, and he saw the thing that's in the middle of the sphere. Oh no, but but it's I, it's cool. You guys could go check that out too. That it's it's a it's a it's a much more expanded thing, and they talk about dark matter and dark energy, and it's actually really interesting. Wow, cool. So I recommend seeing that. Yeah, man. Um, cool. But yeah, that's uh, horrif- horrifying, and uh, that guy shouldn't have said those things. No. All right, and uh, this this voicemail comes from somebody who uh, is. Uh, saying what a lot of people have been writing to us and bugging us about mm. and uh and i think his uh his general outrage and tone is very appropriate okay because we've we've let something sort of slip through the cracks oh dear Hey, Frank and Dan, this is Tom in California. I'm not understanding what's up with the American Atheist Convention. I remember when you guys first announced it, you said that there'd be a, a big to-do there, that you'd give people a, a tour of the of the Temple Square and so forth, and I, I can't find anything regarding what you guys have planned. Would you put something on Facebook? Uh, I've looked on your website, Facebook. I can't, can't find anything. Would you let us know what you have planned, if anything? Hope to see you guys. Take care. Thanks. Bye-bye. Yeah. I just don't think he was looking hard enough. <laughs> just, you mean in the last five minutes? Just because... When you just posted There's nothing it. there doesn't mean you shouldn't look harder. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, it's a really good point. And we, 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 we teased have... it months and months and months ago that we had all this crazy stuff in the works. And then we... What, what, I'll tell you what ended up happening. We kind of got a little bit... Like, we were trying to do things through official channels with American Atheists and make it, like, sort of an official thing. So yeah. that, so that it, you know, we we wanted to make, we want, we don't want to step on their toes. Right. So yeah. we've been trying to work with them. Right. That, that kind of fell flat a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So that didn't work very well. So, so now we've got a new show, uh, or a new plan. Right. Uh, and, and so there is a plan. Yeah. Uh, and what we will be doing, uh, should we just say what we're doing? Let's say what we're doing. What we're doing is we're uh, on Friday of the convention. Mm-hmm. The convention's Thursday through Sunday. Right. On Friday of the convention, uh, we're all going to have lunch together. We'll yeah. have a lunchtime meetup. So we're, so what we decided was, let's just wait for the convention to break. We're not getting in the way of anybody. Right. And so we can just all meet for a nice little lunch. It's like an hour and a half break, right? Something like that. Right. Um, and so we'll meet at noon in the lobby of the Hilton. 
Um, and uh, and yeah, and then we'll go. We'll, we'll Frank have a and bite. I will 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 we'll take you to a a restaurant. Uh, yes. We haven't we haven't decided which one because we don't know how big it's going to be. If yet. this is a large group, it might be the food court. Yeah. Somewhere. We'll sort we'll sort all that out. <laughs> but we'll all go to lunch, we'll all have a nice chat, and then Frank and I will take you to the temple. Yeah. The main point will be going to the temple. Right. And spending some time together. Yeah, spending time and uh enjoying uh the the crazy that is Mormonism. Yeah. If it's a small group, we'll probably just walk around together. If it's a big group, we'll we, give you a nice primer and then and then and, uh, and then we'll we'll let you disperse and go see for yourself and, and then we'll be around we'll so you can come and talk to us we'll regroup yeah exactly we'll answer questions and then go and do something else yeah. go see something else yeah yeah it'll be it'll be a heck of a lot of fun we should do, oh i'm going to keep this idea to myself yeah okay yeah, well i don't want to say it no no good 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 but but ooh that's not, that does sound exciting aren't you all tantalized right now yeah look at what's highlighted Ooh, that would be kind of fun. Well, yeah, okay. Yeah, fun. Th- I think so. Yeah, okay. I think so. Okay. Fun things are in the works, kids. So, uh, uh, but we we want a head count, at least an approximate head count. Yeah. So if you could just go to the go to the blog, go to thankgodimatheist dot com. Yes, and you will see a place. Uh, I, I I will have it up hopefully. Yeah, before this airs. So yeah, you, yeah, yeah. So go there now, and you will see a, a place to uh, to sign up uh-huh. and just give us your info. We won't use it for anything other than contacting right. you about this. Right. Um. And 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 we will uh, we'll get you signed up, and we'll we'll all go together and have a great time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. We really want some out of staters to come. Those I mean, Utahns are all welcome. Oh, absolutely. Um. But you guys have heard the spiel. You guys haven't. You haven't heard our spiel about the temple. But you've heard. <laughs> you've heard a lot of the spiel. Uh, the rest of you uh, will have a great time. I promise. Absolutely. All right. So thanks for uh, taking us to task. Mm-hmm. We needed that. All right. Um, well. Yes. So today, Dan, mm-hmm. we're talking about general conference. Are we ready for it? Yes. Are we ready. We're ready. Okay. Here we oh go. wait. We have. Oh, Don't do we want to think? Oh yeah, we have uh, yes, we we uh are we have a most important person of today <laughs> which is that we have one donation uh one donor. Uh, other podcasts get way more people like donating. We got to sort that out. I don't know how we're I don't know what we're doing wrong here. I I don't know. No. Uh we, we have do wonderful we, donors and I appreciate everything we have, that people say. You know what? Us, that's so. that's that's the truth of the matter. But I but uh Yes, so we want to thank Mark uh, for his generous donation. Thank you very much, Mark. And uh, and if anyone else wants to uh, contribute, because basically we run off of the kindness of you guys. Right. That's how we work. Absolutely. This can't happen uh, without your help. So if you're willing... Wow, I sounded so NPR right there. Yeah, that was good. Okay. You should go shill for them. I know. So if you want to give that help, uh, <laughs> it will be gratefully accepted at thankgodimatheist.com. Uh, and you can just click on the support button. Operators are standing by. No, they're not. <laughs> no, you have to click. You just have to click on it, and then you have to enter information. The digital operators, <laughs> the, digital, the ones and zeros, the are ones, waiting for the, you. The, 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 the tiny people that live inside the PayPal <laughs> are waiting to collect. To your... take your number and to run it across the internet. Right. Exactly. It's a little courier service. Yeah, it's nice. Yes. Anyway, uh, you can either do what Mark did, which is a one-time donation, or you can give, you can subscribe and you know choose your level. This is all on you, how much oh, you yeah. want to give or how little, and we accept all comers. So absolutely, thank all you right. very much, Mark. Well, cool. Um, okay, so general conference. Two here's, big things happened. Here's the deal. Uh, as you, uh, as as our uh, longtime listeners know. Already, uh, and even those who have seen our videos on the YouTubes, mm-hmm. um, there the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints, the Mormons have every every year have two general conferences, mm. semi annual mm. general conferences. They're they're actually so um, so they, they call one the annual. And the other one, the semi-annual. Have you ever noticed that? No, I, I can't remember which one's which. I think one's, it's the spring is the 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 one hundred and thirty second annual general conference, oh. and the one in the fall is like is the semi-annual. <laughs> that's that's just stupid. 
<laughs> Isn't that, don't they do that? I believe you. I think they make that distinction. Uh, I just think it's dumb. <laughs> Anywho, uh, so so they had it uh, over the last weekend. The reason that we're bringing it up this time is because uh, in advance of the American Atheists having their big convention here in Salt Lake City, they, uh, the Utah Atheists, which mm-hmm. is the Utah chapter of American Atheists, decided that they would have a, a thing. Mm. Uh, it, it's a, it's a thing. <laughs> it's, they had a rally essentially, uh, and they encouraged former members of the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints to resign from the church. Yeah. Mean, meaning they sent letters in, uh, asking for their names to be removed from church records, etc. And I've always felt that this is a really important thing for ex-Mormons to do. You know, I didn't always feel that way. I now feel that way. I, I, I think it's something that's, I think it's just critical. I think that it, it behooves any former Mormon to get your name out of there. They put so much, like, you know, importance. Mm. They, they, they view it as being so important, this number that they get, that they get it announced to the world. Right. And I just want to take that number down. Right. And I don't want to be counted amongst their people. Indeed, and that was what was that was what became important to me when I finally did it. it. When I did it, it was it was right after Proposition Eight passed in California. This is the this was the the anti gay uh, uh, amendment uh, was... constitutional amendment to prevent gay people from getting married, uh, and it was passed in California largely on uh, the backs of. Millions of dollars having to been uh, having been put into the campaign against it or for Prop Eight by churches, including uh, the uh, probably the largest donor being the LDS Church. So that's when I resigned from the church because I, for the longest time, I didn't care. I just was like, I don't care if they count me. I don't give a shit. Right. I know I'm not Mormon. Right. So I don't give a shit what they th- whether they think I'm Mormon. But it did matter to me that my name was still associated with this group that was so anti-gay. And right. I was not okay with that. So right. that was the moment when I was like, oh, nope, it's time to resign from the church. But a lot of people don't do it. A lot of people uh, either either feel like – and I'll tell you what. The church is funny about this. You write that letter and legally they're supposed to immediately strike your name from the records and just that that letter constitutes a – you have the legal right to just resign, and yeah. then it's done. Absolutely. But they're sneaky, and they send you. They start to send you stuff. Are you sure right. this cancels all of the blessings that have been bestowed on you? This means that you'll never, ever, ever get into heaven. You can't have. <laughs> it means that you have to wear Satan socks for the rest of your. Uh, I mean, literally, they they lay it on thick. Yeah. And then you, the socks thing, they don't actually do. That was just me. But, but they, uh, yeah, they, uh, they lay it on thick and a lot of people retract. This is, well, this is where people make their mistake is they're like, oh, you mean I have to go through the, the bishop? Right. Right. It's like, no, you already resigned. You're done. You sent the letter in, you're done. And so that was what, that the letter I sent back Mm -hmm. was like, you didn't read my first letter. Right. I no longer belong to your church. Send me the letter that says that you understand that. Right. And that was the gist of it. And it was like four sentences long. Yeah. And it was like, do it. (laughs) And within a week, I had the letter. But so many Mormons have real trouble being that firm. Yeah. They've been trained not to not to be contentious. So they don't. So it's like when they're so. If the church catches any wind that you might be wavering a little bit on this decision or that you're not mm. like that the, you're scared a little bit, they will what they'll do is they'll call you to a church court. Yep. You have to go to a court for and, disciplining and you have to you have to sit in these men in dark suits will s- stare sternly at you and say, really? Mm. Are you are you sure? Do you understand? Who offended you, brother? Implications of this decision. Yeah, what, exactly. What, how did we fail you? Who who did someone hurt you in some way? <laughs> we uh, want you back, brother. Yeah, yeah. Gross. All of that stuff, and then e- and then if or sister, mm. and then if you're uh, if at the end of all of that, you still want to not be a member. 
and right. they'll then they'll begrudgingly take you off. Right. But the so, truth is that as soon as you send in the letter legally, that it's done. Right. So nonetheless, they Not, had a right. mass, a mass little uh, stop being a member thing. Right. Uh, they they uh, and then they marched. They marched around Temple Square uh, through the the group of Mormons lining the sidewalks singing hymns. God. Do you remember that yes, last time? Yes, they're awful. I hate <laughs> they're them. Just good. They just sing hymns at everyone who's walking past. Uh, boy, do they not? Boy, do they know how to make it uncomfortable for everybody? Uh, anyway, they uh, so so yeah. These guys uh, they they did the thing. Dave Silverman, the president of American Atheists, was there to give a nice little speech to yeah. speechify. Um, good. And they were, I, they were very respectful and and nice about the whole thing. They just wanted everyone to know that they don't approve of things like being bigoted against gay people. Mm, yes, and uh, and uh, other uh, pos- you know, treating women badly. They don't like that very much. Mean, and uh, and then they and then they posted their letters. So, and so, uh, hmm. I feel like that. I don't know. There needed there needed to be something more. I don't know what it, they should it needed. They should have had shirts. Shirts would have been good. They should have had. It, it would have been nice if they were like all I wearing res- like, like I resigned t shirts. Right. Hashtag I resigned. I resigned. Yeah. Oh, hashtag. Was, yeah. Was hashtag good would thing. be good. Right. Yeah. I left the Mormon Church and all I got was this lousy t shirt. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I, uh, so that was one thing that happened. Then the other thing. Now we've talked about this before, but the uh, the ordained women movement within the Mormon Church um, had their second try to get into priesthood meeting r- event. And this one, this this the church was so like worried about this one. They actually banned for the first time Ever. that anybody knows of. Uh, they banned all media from from Temple Square. Right. They would not allow anyone to record anything because, uh, and and it's clear that it's because of the ordained women people. Oh, clearly, it, what 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 changed between the last few conferences and now? Right. Yeah. Exactly. Between, you know. But like, what what happened was there were these very compelling photographs of women peacefully trying to get into a meeting and being turned away and right. weeping. Right. <laughs> I don't want that. They can't have that. That can't happen. Horrible. <laughs> Horrible, I tell you. And so the women tried to get into priesthood meeting again. It, it all smacks very much of like I I don't know. There's a there's this whole it's like the the backwards version of of um of Groucho Marx joke. I would never want to belong to a club that would have me for a member. Yeah. Uh-huh. This is like the backwards version of that. I desperately want to be- belong to a club that doesn't want me for a member. Right. Yeah. I, this is but a religion's a different thing, Dan. It's such a weird and and, thing. and there are always the like. It's so easy to say. It's so easy to say about these about these women. Well, if you don't if you don't like it, go find another religion. Right. That's, right? That's, because that's, that's what that, that, it feels like you're supposed to say. Right. But. They see themselves as reformers from within. And these are right. people who, um, you know, like so many Mormons, not me, thank God. Um, but, well, you know, anyways, they, they, they have generations before them. Right. right? This, this is what they are. They it's, are Mormon. They it's have their inherited. cultural identity. Yeah. It's, and they, their ancestors marched across the plains. Right. And they love their church. They love their church. They love the tradition. They love the community. They, but they know, haven't helped them. You know, they like it. But they think that something's wrong with it. Yeah. They think that something's not quite right. Right. Well, now here's the interesting thing. So attuned to their, I mean, it, it's, it almost is counterintuitive to my understand to my knowledge of this church because my knowledge of this church says if they don't like something. They ignore it and they just press forward with what they what with what they're doing. Right. So a little thing like this seemed to me like it would just be a little a minor irritant that they would just ignore and it, and hope that it goes away. Right. They have not been ignoring it. They have been like they are buckling at the knees over this thing. They're they're wringing their hands and gnashing their teeth and tearing their hair. Well, because it's something that goes to it. It, it undermines 
the, the, the basic power structure of the church. It's amazing. So these men who are in control of the church, they are threatened. Yeah. By women? I know. These women? And it's amazing. They literally, like, so we did a story a few weeks ago about them putting a, putting pictures of the women leadership up on, on Temple Square mm, where yeah. before it was what all the men. a big deal that is, yeah. That was a big deal. I mean, these guys are doing everything they can to say, no, we really, really like women. It's just, it's not us. It's God. God right. has made these decisions. We would totally give you the priesthood, but <laughs> no, we can't do no, it. No, no, they're we, not going that far. They are going that far, and I'll prove it to you. Here's they're the, saying, if it were up to us. Well, they're, here's what they're saying. Dallin H. Oaks, who's, who's an apostle for the LDS Church, uh, and a big deal. He's a big deal in, in the Mormon circles. Yeah. Uh, he gave a talk at the very meeting that these women were turned away from. Yeah. In which he addressed these issues head on. He said that women already have the authority of the priesthood. How? How? Well, how is he saying that? Well, basically he's what saying... Is, he's that saying, they share their husbands? Well, <laughs> what about the single women in the church? He said that women who serve full-time missions quote, perform a priesthood function, as do women officers of, like, no, they don't. Relief Society or teachers in the church. What what functions are they... Are they... Basically, what they're saying no. is, if you do anything churchy, it's essentially covered under the very, very large umbrella of what they're calling priesthood. No. And the only difference is that... that's false. The only difference is that women don't get offices within the priesthood. Also, they, we know that. Women, <clears throat> women don't get to be, you know, they don't get to be ordained into the priesthood, but only because they don't get to be, right, right, like yeah, flip it's, a switch, dude. Yeah, like, he he said that the he create said female that, offices, do whatever you need to do. The the so he's talking about the Relief Society, which is the the women's organization within the church, and he said it is not just a class. But something, because it's a class in church every week right. they go to the, but it's not just a class, but something they belong to, a divinely established appendage to the priesthood. Whoever functions in an office or calling received from one, from one who holds the priesthood keys and exercises priesthood authority in performing uh, his or her assigned duties. Oh, whoever, wait, whoever functions in an office or calling received from one who holds a priesthood keys exercises priesthood authority in performing his or her assigned duties. Oh, dear that does God. not mean that they have those keys. No. It means that they're perform. It's, it's this amazing double speak yeah. that he has come up with to try and, 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 and allay these women. Or rather, probably more to the point, to try and get all of the other church members who aren't on who aren't on board with the ordained women movement right. to see it in a way that will further that will allow them to not be okay with the to, to ostracize the ordained women right uh movement how does it work I, I i guess i don't know the answer to this um in the temple there are women performing priestly things there are very priestly things right. there's like laying on of hands they're <laughs> officiating they're, ceremonies that are woman on woman ceremony because it's <laughs> man on man stuff over on you know the right on side the, of the room right. and then somebody Mostly has to the, the washing and anointing the washing and anointing but there's also the um um oh no i guess not i think it's just the washing and anointing that the women do but that's a priesthood function I, did, I mean, all of this is bullshit, I so thought, we don't need to talk in their terms, but but in their terms, women can't have the priesthood. No. They just can't. No. And what he said, so so literally, like, at one point, uh, so I, I guess they, they went into this weird tangent about the dangers of, like, technology, like <laughs> pornography addiction and distractions from technology uh, is that what's causing these and women religious to... opposition? Well, they're everybody's finding out on the internet uh, a whole bunch of history right. that was hidden right. from from right, everybody right, else. Right, right, right. So, so like we're hearing all of these stories about people like re, like hearing. I mean, there was that story about a guy in in where was it Norway or somewhere in in Scandinavia, I think, and and he he was a bishop in the Mormon Church, and he oh, yeah, yeah. and he went uh, he heard. Somebody complaining about anti-Mormon literature and and all of this history stuff that 
was making them lose their faith. And he researched it out just to see, you know, what they were talking about. And, oh, well, it turns out it's all true. Oh, no, what do I do with that? Yeah. And it's happening all over the world. And they're in trouble. So now, there's, now they're speaking out against it. There are countless ways technology can distract you from what is most important, says Randall L. Ridd, who's a second Who counselor. He's a second counselor in the Young Men Presidency. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. I think uh, that well, the, so what, what, what? I think that the takeaway here. They need to get rid of the internet. <laughs> yeah. They need, to, they, need, they need for the Lord to come out and say, um, it, it, you should not have the internet in your home. I think that would be brilliant. For the longest time, their whole deal was like, you know, we don't, we, we, we're, we're weird because we, uh, because we have polygamy. Then they had to get rid of polygamy. Right. Now they're weird because they don't drink and they don't drink coffee. Yeah. But that's become sort of, no, nah, yeah, people don't care about that anymore. Yeah. You say we don't do the internet? Weirdos. You've gone to JW status. <laughs> You've gone all the way to Jehovah's Witness status. You've gone with full J dub. <laughs> you then. There you go. <laughs> they do the internet, don't they? I don't know. I, I, have no I clue imagine what they that do. they do, but I, they'd have to. But I mean, I, what I'm saying is that the Mormons need a new weirdo thing. They need a new weird. Yeah. Well, why not? Right. The Lord cannot possibly like the internet. He can't. Yeah. <laughs> There's no way he likes that he thing. He keeps telling people stuff. It's mostly porn. <laughs> well, it's mostly porn and right. uh, and truth about his one true church. Yeah. That he doesn't want people to know. Yeah. That Joseph Smith was fucked up and he knows it. Right. Yeah. He doesn't want you to read that shit Joseph <laughs> Smith said. He doesn't want yeah. Brigham Young said. Yeah, those those he, dudes he, he was working with what was available, folks. <laughs> it's not uh, these were not it's really his chosen people. They were just getting to the chosen people. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to find a quote uh that I had read in this article. I just can't find it. It basically said that uh, it was it was Oaks basically finally saying, you know, we we want you to have, you know, ladies. We they have, you know, they have these various priesthood functions, though they but God said holding actually holding the priesthood is for men and we mm. can't do anything about it. So we we are powerless. I, I wish we could. I wish we could. We just, we, I just, I can't, are you going to tell God no? Because I'm not. Yeah. He's God. Yeah. He kind of gets to say what he wants to say. Right. Oh, we are not free to alter the divinely decreed pattern that only men will hold offices in the priesthood. We're just not free to do it. No. I wish we could. I, like, what does, I mean... Mormon cosmology kind of starts to fall apart if women are equal, like truly equal. Don't you think? Uh, I think they could get away with it. I think that's where that's mm. that's where it was headed in 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 the really early days. Joseph Smith was like kind of gonna go there, and then didn't. Hmm. Well, who knows? Who does know? I mean, who the truth knows? of the matter is, uh, Mormon cosmology falls apart anyway. Well, that's true. So they might. I mean, adding one another level of nonsense <laughs> it strikes me that the, it may not have any effect at all oh you're probably right anywho anywho there well, you go that's, that's, that's yeah that's that's, that's, that's enough of we that. got atheists and women marching walking around on temple <laughs> square <laughs> and uh, making all of those poor mormons uncomfortable they should have joined forces somehow they should have figured out where's their common ground and they, they should have joined forces women in the ordained women movement wouldn't even do an interview with our show i know because they were so worried about who they'd who they'd be associated with. Just awful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right, kids. I reached out. Yeah. I wanna I wanted to interview somebody last time and they wouldn't talk to us. Yep. Assholes. All right. I hope you don't get the priesthood, you jerks. <laughs> well, I kinda hope they don't either. Because it keeps a rift going in the Mormon church. Right, right. The longer they stay... I don't want stay... them to have equality in the Mormon church. I don't want the church to get good on something. Right. The longer they the stay church sexist stay and anti-gay, and stupid. the worst, the, the yeah. worst it's going to be for them. They need to hold on to all of that. Yeah. For as long as their, their aging, Grandpa, arthritic hands right. can hold on to it. Right. Exactly. That's <sighs> 
All right. Well, anyways, if you'd like to join the conversation at any time, uh, you can always email us. Our email address is podcast at thankgodimatheist.com. Right. Or uh, call in to us and, and use your voice the way so many did this week uh, by calling. Uh, sorry. It's 424-666-8442. And uh, we also have a Facebook page that's fantastic. Facebook.com slash TGI Atheist. Right. And we thank uh, Mackenzie for managing that page and doing the great job she does there. If you do want to uh, uh, donate to us, I will say again, go to thankgodimatheist.com and click on the support button. Or if you want to support us, but you're, you don't have the monetary means to do so, we understand, but you could certainly help us out by going on your listening uh, platform, platform of, choice. of choice and giving us a five-star rating. That's always nice. <laughs> we appreciate it. All right. Also, thanks to the Red Rock Hot Club for letting us use their music. And uh, thank you all for listening. Have a great week, everybody. Bye. Bye.